ਕੇਵੀ ਕਾਲਜ ਬਠਿੰਡਾ ਆਈ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਰੋਹਿਤ ਮਹਿਰਾ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਫਰਮ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਇੰਸਟੀਚਿਊਟ ਆਫ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਜਲੰਧਰ ਟੁਡੇ ਹੀ ਵਿਲ ਗਿਵ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਔਨ ਐਨਵਾਇਰਮੈਂਟਲ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀ ਸੋ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਸਟਾਰਟਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੀਡਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਆਈ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਗੁਰਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਨ ਟੂ ਸੇ ਫਿਊ ਵਰਡਸ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਡੀਪੀਟੀ ਸਟਾਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਸਕੀਮ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਵੈਬਿਨਾਰ ਹੈਸ ਬੀਨ ਸਪਾਂਸਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਡੀਪੀਟੀ ਸੋ ਓਵਰ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮਾਨ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸਰ ਇਸ ਮਾਈ ਵਾਇਸ ਇਜ਼ ਆਡੀਬਲ ਯਾ ਯਾ ਆਡੀਬਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸਰ so kindly allow me uh, one, one minute to share my screen and i, I take just uh, one minute to share i think the screen is visible yes okay so good morning. morning to all uh, dignitaries uh, and our esteemed uh, resource person dr rohit mehra ji and uh, uh, as uh, this uh, webinar is sponsored by dpt star college king so this is my duty to uh, describe uh, within two or three slides what what is dbt and dbt uh, star college king Uh, it is the department of biotechnology of ministry of science and technology government of india has uh, started this scheme in the year 2008 and uh, it provides uh, financial support to ug science education across the country for improving the practical training and our college is the first college of our region uh, that has been selected for this scheme for the year 2022 2023 and uh, what about the objectives of uh, this uh, star college scheme the objectives uh, of the scheme can be abbreviated by the word smart where as stands for uh, strengthening of infrastructure for science labs m motivating students for hands on practical training augmentation of interdisciplinary activities refinement and repair of existing lab equipments and t stands for training of students teachers and lab staff so not without taking much time i would like to uh, share the, uh, the control to dr gurpreet singh for the brief introduction of our esteemed resource person dr rohit mehra ji over to dr gurpreet singh thank you sir uh, before giving the introduction of uh, our our the resource person i now request uh, our worthy principal uh, dr rajiv sharma to say a few words and welcome our resource over to you dr sir yes uh, dr uh, gurpreet singh head department of uh, physics uh, dr man uh, coordinator dbt star college scheme and dear students on behalf of dav college bathinda uh, i welcome dr rohit mehra from department of physics nit jalandhar uh, for accepting our request to deliver this webinar to the students and faculty members of dav college bathinda and i am very thankful to uh, dr mehra for sparing his valuable time from his uh, busy schedule uh, he is quite busy in academics as well as in uh, other activities in jalandhar and very importantly i am uh, sharing with my students and uh, faculty members that uh, dr mehra is a big name in research in nit jalandhar and is always helpful to the students and uh, gurpreet sir aap ek uh, मेरा सर के साथ ना एम ओ यू भी साइन कर सकते हैं माई रिक्वेस्ट टू डॉक्टर मेरा इज देयर दैट अवर स्टूडेंट्स अंडर दिस डीपीटी स्टार कॉलेज स्कीम दे विल विजिट टू योर लैब बिकॉज आई नो दैट डॉक्टर रोहित मेरा हैज एस्टेब्लिश्ड ए वेरी गुड रिसर्च लैब विद द हेल्प ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एटॉमिक एनर्जी एंड बी आर सी दैट स्टूडेंट कैन हैव द आइडिया 
कि जो आज लेक्चर इन्वायरमेंटल रेडियो एक्टिविटी पे सरकार हम सुनेंगे दैट दे कैन हैव द आइडिया दैट हाउ दिस रेडियो एक्टिविटी इज चेक्ड इन सॉयल वाटर एंड एयर सैंपल डॉक्टर रोहित मेरा इज हैविंग वेल इक्विप्ड लेबोरेटरी रिलेटेड विद दिस रेडियो एक्टिविटी रिसर्च सो आई रिक्वेस्ट अवर डॉक्टर मान टू हैव इश्यूज विद डिटेल डिस्कशन विद डॉक्टर मेरा सो दैट अवर स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस रीजन दे कैन विजिट इन एन आई टी जलंधर एंड वंस अगेन आई वेलकम डॉक्टर रोहित मेरा Uh, to our uh, institute, and uh, I am very um, uh, say our students are lucky to have uh, today with us in our this webinar. Thank you once again. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, we will definitely uh, look into this matter. Uh, I will request Dr. Rohit Mehra to uh, share their lab. We will visit that. Definitely, we will visit their lab with our students. Now uh, let me uh, give some uh, brief introduction of Dr. Rohit Mehra. Uh, Dr. Rohit Mehra is a uh, associate professor from the Department of Physics, National Institute of Technology, Jalandhar. He is PhD and uh, MSc both from G N U Amritsar, half of Department of Physics, and he got an MD from the New Delhi. I get from you. Regarding the research plus Mehra, uh, he is a professor of radon and thoron studies, etching and annealing studies in minerals and tissue thermal studies. That is due to natural radiation loads in the environment. Heavy iron radiation damage studies in track orders and assessment of radiation loads due to building materials. And radiation induced modification in polymeric crack detectors. In addition to it, he has uh, over 175 publications in national and international journals of review with high impact. And he has uh, publications in conference pub uh, proceedings also, and six reference books to his credit. In addition to it, he has completed uh, uh, five research projects comprising nearly 1.3 crores uh, from various uh, agencies like DAE, DST, and uh, uh, AERB. Uh, regarding uh, his uh, uh, research projects, here I want to mention that uh, these projects mainly focus on the uh, Malwa Belt of uh, Punjab. For example, measurement of radon, thoron. And progeny distribution in different types of houses in Bhatinda, Mansa, Muxer, uh, and Freeport district of Punjab. And similarly, measurement of radon, thoron, and uh, progeny distribution in the different types of houses and natural radioactivity in soil in Hanumangarh, Churu, Sri Ganga Nagar district of, uh, of Rajasthan. Uh, in addition to it, he has important. Uh, uh, designations in national and international agencies like uh, he is vice president of nuclear track society of india and uh, he is life member of geo hazards research society germany he is associate fellow of international congress for chemistry and environment uh, life member of uh, indian society of information theory and its application uh, and uh, indian society for radiation physics bar mumbai So now, not taking much time, I now invite Dr. Rohit Mehra uh, to deliver his presentation on the topic of environmental. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Prith, for a very nice introduction, and uh, I thank uh, Rajiv Ji, especially uh, who is very close associate of mine from Jalandhar uh, itself from last so many years. Interacting with each other, and uh, we are having a very close association. And uh, it's always a pleasure for me to at least uh, join my institutes like uh, DAV Bhatinda or even Malod because I have started my career from this region. And whatever I have earned, the credit goes to this region because most of my work, research work, relates to this region. Uh, 
Dr. Mahan, Dr. Praveen Bala, Dr. Dugal, they all are very close to me and uh, we always share our ideas with, uh, along with each other and uh, whatever Dr. Rajiv has said that uh, we should have allow our students or your students to visit our lab. So you are always welcome. Our labs are open uh, 24 hours. And this is a very important thing that in NIT, some of the labs are working 24 hours, 24 by 365. So my PhD students, they are working throughout even uh, uh, at night time because especially in summers, because when hostels doesn't have the AC facilities, students prefer to remain in the lab itself. So uh, it's a uh, lab which has been developed by the BRC with the help of BRC as well as uh, we are having MOU with now IISC Bangalore. So they have recognized our lab uh, as one of the uh, their adjoining research lab. So whatever the research we will publish uh, on the behalf of IISC, they will publish uh, in the publications and uh, those results will be certified by the BRC as well as the IISC Bangalore. So this is the new achievement which we have achieved that ISC Bangalore has uh, uh, taken an initiative to collaborate with our lab instead of rather we should go to the collaboration, they have come to us for the collaboration and similarly IIT Roper have uh, collaborated us. Pushpinder uh, is there in the Department of Physics, Dr. Pushpinder, he has signed an MOU with us and uh, recently one of our students has been taken as an associate research fellow in IIT Rupert. So it's a good facility. I would lo love that students should uh, see that facilities uh, because government has invested a huge amount of money and recently we have purchased uh, AAS also, Atomic Absorption Spectrometer as well as ICPMS uh, where uh, purchase order has been placed and uh, it will be delivered within one or two months. And uh, another thing which uh, in my institute we have uh, procured SEM. Uh, we are already having XRD, so those facilities you people can utilize, especially the teachers who are working in these areas for characterization part. Yeah, as well as SAM has been uh, uh, installed recently, very recently. <coughs> and uh, we are having the best uh, available equipment in northern India nowadays with all the necessary attachments. So I uh, request all of you to uh, join those facilities also for your research. So thank you once again for a very nice introduction. And uh, now, uh, not taking much of time, I would like to uh, share uh, the idea of a uh, natural environmental radioactivity with you people from where you could have an idea that uh, where you are living and why it is important to study. Just sharing my screen. So is it visible? So uh, the topic of today's webinar is environmental radioactivity and uh, uh, just for your uh, information that uh, why we go for environmental radioactivity we will be studying in this uh, webinar or in this discussion that is what is radioactivity and uh, the important uh, aspects of radioactivity like radon, thoron, how to measure those radioactivity elements either in air or water and then what are the different types of radionuclides which we can measure in soil? So if you just see this slide, uh, it's not a new thing to measure the uh, radiations. Radiations were present uh, since the evolution of a human being on the earth. So even before the evolution of human being, radiations were always there. So once the earth has been originated, so from the life of the earth, radiations were there. The only thing which uh, has changed is that is now uh, we are having not only the natural radiations, we are having some man-made radiations also and uh, especially uh, nowadays with the advancements of uh, new medical diagnostic techniques. 
so those radiations have increased the level have, has increased because uh, now we have an, uh, having so many medical facilities where we are undergoing so many uh, medical tests for the diagnostic purposes for which we are exposed to the radiations so that is the additional thing which we have caused uh, even with the advancement of uh, our medical uh, profession and uh, another thing that is the choice of your building materials now have changed so different type of building materials are now uh, being used uh, during the construction and uh, that choice is very important that how to select a building material which gives you lesser amount of radiations so i will share my ideas with you people and i will tell you that uh, how it is affecting now a uh, very basic thing which everybody knows as a student also science student or uh, even as a layman that uh, radioactivity was uh, discovered way back in 1896 when bakel was working on some uranium salts now what we are interested in especially as a radiation physicist that how this bigger nuclei is are uh, uh, they are being, which are not so much stable they are uh, to form some daughter nuclei and emitting some radiations so very famous reaction which everybody knows uh, as a fission a fission reaction uranium fission reaction where uranium decays to form a barium and krypton and uh, neutrons and a lot of energies are emitted so on the basis of this we have categorized the radiations into different categories uh, Uh, that is one is the ionizing radiations another are the non ionizing radiations so ionizing radiations uh, i think you all are aware about the phenomena of ionization because uh, you are a, uh, what i feel is the science students so uh, ionization is a phenomena which is uh, basically caused by the charged particles and uh, they transfer their energies on some of the materials on which they fall and they ionize them to make the ions so they are further categorized into the particle radiations and then heavy energy electromagnetic waves similarly non ionizing radiations they are low energy electromagnetic waves and ultrasounds and further the ionizing radiations are having alpha beta gamma and neutrons so in our lab especially at uh, nit jalandhar we are focusing only on the ionizing radiations we are not working on the non ionizing radiations though they are also having a dominant very big effects on human beings especially nowadays uh, where uh, mobile phones are being used and there are a lot of towers are being in, uh, installed so in the society there is a, a scope for uh, having the study in the non ionizing radiations so that uh, you could uh, even people are working for uh, their phd problems on uh, studying the non ionizing radiations that how the mobile phones or how the mobile towers or how the different other uh, things have uh, changed our lifestyle or uh, have affected the human beings but uh, in our lab we are focusing only on the ionizing radiations so we are uh, we have categorized the radiations into four types uh, not as a three type which is very common to you that is alpha beta gamma but uh, i have mentioned it as a four type alpha beta gamma and neutrons uh, though neutrons are not uh, directly radioactive in nature but what happens that once the neutrons strike some of the materials they allow alpha beta and gamma to come out and uh, this picture will give you an idea that uh, how it is uh, being uh, utilized in terms of a uh, stopping power so alphas can be stopped by a thin sheet of papers betas could be stopped by a thin sheet of metals and gammas or x rays could be stopped by thick lead sheets and even neutrons for uh, neutrons you have to use concrete or uh, heavy water so which is uh, very commonly used in uh, nuclear reactors also so though neutrons are not uh, uh, directly radioactive in nature but once they uh, fall they allow alpha beta and gamma to come out so that is why we have made four categorizations instead of three and there is a very basic question especially uh, 
from the students they should know what is the difference between x rays and gamma rays so they looks very similar uh, even in terms of energy even in terms of uh, their effects on the body but the basic difference which every uh, science student should know is the origin difference that is x rays they are originated from the electrons or uh, the electrons revolving uh, and uh, gammas they are originated from the uh, nucleon uh, nucleus transitions so they are uh, originated from the inside the nucleus and uh, x rays they are originated from the nucleus across the uh, orbits or electron orbits which are there no <clears throat> it is everywhere so natural radiations we generally say it is everywhere because the natural radiations uh, they are coming from the sun in terms of cosmic rays they are even coming from the soil they are even coming from the plants they are coming from the building materials which you are uh, using so i have already told you that the choice of building material is also very important for in terms of radioactivity if you are really interested in measuring the exact value of radioactivity now uh, these are the sources of radiations which uh, uh, we have categorized in terms of uh, the total combination of 100% where uh, natural radiations contribute to 82% and uh, the man made radiations contribute to the 18% category and out of this uh, natural source 55% contribution is only due to one element that is radon so that is why the study of a uh, radon is very important uh, the reason being uh, if you study radon you could have a uh, assess about the total 55% contribution due to one source itself so and uh, secondly radon why it is important because radon is a gas so once a thing is in a gaseous state so it is very difficult that you could escape from that gas because it will be present everywhere if you are sitting in a room if you are moving uh, outside everywhere in the air you will be under the influence of radon so if you inhale something so just in terms of uh, in inhaling factor if you say if you inhale more air so what will happen if radon concentration is more in the air so more radon will enter to your lungs so तो मैं जनरली अपने बच्चों को हंसता होता हूँ कि बाबा रामदेव से इसकी लंबे लंबे सांस लो तो लंबे लंबे सांस लोगे तो ज्यादा रेडॉन अंदर जाएगी इफ इट इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द रेडॉन इफ रेडॉन इज प्रेजेंट इन मोर वैल्यूज इन द एनवायरनमेंट सो रेडॉन जब अंदर जाएगी सो इट हैज अ इट्स ओन नेचुरल हाफ लाइफ ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट सेवन डेज एंड वंस इट डिकेज इट डिकेज टू फॉर्म पलोनी so it emits one alpha particle and decays to form a polonium 218 radon has a atomic weight of 222 and then it decays to form 218 that is polonium and then which further decays to form polonium 214 now those alphas you have seen from this slide that uh, alphas can be stored by thin sheet of paper but once you have inhaled those alpha sources so what is happening that those alphas which are decaying from the radon they are affecting your internal lining of lungs because agar wo bahar se andar nahi ja sakte to andar se bahar bhi nahi aa sakte so that is why if alpha is being generated once you inhale some alpha emitters so that alpha will be generated within your lungs and that alpha will be giving its energy to internal lining of your lungs so which can cause damage to internal linings and which can cause damage to your internal lung structure and which is the large after cigarette smoking for the lung cancer so that is why radon is known as the second largest contributor for lung cancer after the cigarette smoking now once we study the radioactivity sometimes uh, it is being asked that uh, we have to measure radioactivity in terms of different units 
Now, this pictorial representation will give you an idea that uh, why those different units are required. Uh, I have uh, made a figure which will give you a very clear cut idea that uh, if you are just measuring the number of disintegrations per second, that is the natural radioactivity, we generally measure it in terms of a unit which is called Becker. So, that is the number of apple falling from a tree just for a pictorial representation. And suppose a person comes and had a nap beneath that tree. So what will happen? So whole of the apple which are falling from the tree that will not strike that map. Only few apples will strike that map. So only those few apples which are striking that man that can cause radioactive effect on that man. So that is why there is another dose Absorbed dose unit which is called gray. So we are having a different unit that is gray, that is absorbed dose. Now, after this absorbed dose, so whatever I have absorbed, so what will be the effect on my body? That is my effective dose. So this I have shown with the picture that a hump is created, of course, with the apple, no hump could be created, but just for a pictorial representation that apple falls on the head of a person and a hump is created, that is the effect on the body. And uh, you will be surprised to note it down that our lab is the only lab in northern India or even in India who are working on the biokinetic modeling. So uh, we, we are uh, calculating the gonodal doses like uh, for the natural uranium content in water, we are calculating the per organ doses like how much effect for that particular content of uranium in water will affect your kidney, how much uh, effect will be there on your lungs, how much effect will be there on your wounds, how much effects will be there on your uh, other uh, tissues, maybe of legs, maybe of uh, hands, maybe of your brain. So per gonodal doses we are calculating with the help of uh, ICRP model, biokinetic modeling. So uh, our uh, publications in that area are highly recognized by the people who are working in the medical uh, radiation physics because uh, then you can have an estimation of the effect on the different organs and you as a medical physicist could decide in terms of a treatment of a person for the medical diagnostics that that particular portion is already having this much of effect so whether we should go for this type of medical treatment or not so that is why this study is very important now uh, this is actually uh, the impact of exposure i have shown you with the help of a uh, just one table where you could have an idea that if your exposure is, is in terms of 50 to 100 millisievert so it could change your blood chemistry and if the exposure reaches to a level of 500, it could, it could cause you nausea. Nausea means uh, severe cold, you could say. And effects will be measured within hours. But if your uh, dose reaches to of the order of, say, 750 millisieverts, within two, three weeks, the effects could be there. And uh, you could uh, have hair loss, you could have vomiting, you could have fatigue. And uh, if it further reaches, you could be suffering from diarrhea, then blood loss, and within two months, if it reaches to 400 or 4000 level, a death could occur. And again, uh, to a very high values, which have been mentioned in the table. But uh, to your surprise, I would like to share with you people that uh, uh, this 50 millisievert is a very big dose. Generally, on an average, we are having an annual uh, receipt of dose of natural radiation is of the order of 2. Uh, 1. 2 or 1.3 millisieverts of the order of 1.2 to 1.3 millisieverts uh, of the uh, total contribution of around uh, 2. Point something, uh, 2.5 or 2.6 millisieverts per year. Only 1.2 or 1.3 millisieverts is contributed by the radon itself means 55% contribution. So 50 is a very high level and uh, in the nuclear accidents, those doses could be received. Like uh, there were only two famous nuclear accidents which are known to every mankind.
one was the channel and right. another was very recent you could say in fukushima in japan where due to the tsunami that fukushima power plant was destroyed but still the dose at a particular instant it was not more than 10 milliseconds so you could imagine that how safe the nuclear reactors are so even in the case of accident the maximum dose was very much within the controllable limits not permissible limits there are some uh, terms which are called permissible there are some terms which are called controllable limits so it was still in a controllable limits now why we study radiations uh, of course now you could answer these questions because i um, have already discussed that radon is a gas so once thing is in a gaseous state it becomes uncontrollable similarly nuclear power weapon testing emits radiations radiation causes damage to our cells i have already explained you if one alpha is there you can stop at your body and if you shot if you are wearing that alpha will not affect your body but if you inhale that alpha it can damage your internal life. so radiations are invisible and are only detected by the detectors so their effects are seen after few years of inhalation they are not very much instantaneous of course if you give a very high dose like in terms of chemotherapy so of the order of uh, 700 to 800 millisievert dose is being given to the patients then uh, effects could be measured within 21 days or 4 uh, weeks and you have seen that once a person has undergone a chemotherapy treatment so that person is having a hair loss after first or two two cycles maximum third cycle se pehle pehle uske baal jhad jata hai so that is why because we have been exposed to a very high level of radiation so then again uh, its study is very important because it estimates the health risk associated with the average indoor air down level so which is very higher in case of uh, carcinogens and uh, lung cancer skin cancer kidney disease and other health effects are attributed for the inhalation of air down liquid products so that is the uh, reason why we study radiations but one thing is very important that uh, you should always uh, uh, remember that to study radiation is not to make you uh, people jisko hum bolte hain na ek hawa sa create kar dena ki pata nahi kya ho gaya especially in malwa region what my request is there is a lot of you and try in the last few years that uh, the water in the malwa region is very high level of uranium uranium contamination so people will die it was known as even cancer but even some uh, pictures were produced in that area so no doubt it is having a little bit higher value as compared to the other regions of punjab especially the mansa belt or even burj hari ki areas are there in some of the mansa district where the levels are very high but uh, still the levels are within the permissible limits that it can be controlled it can be controlled and the uh, only thing is the awareness which is required by the people that uh, uh, what type of uh, building materials they should use or what type of ventilation conditions they should use so that they would have a lesser exposure because it is very important uh, to have a uh, choice of the building materials also suppose uh, if you are using granites in your houses so we know as a physicist even as a geologist even as a uh, person who is working in uh, the fields of studies of uh, rock samples uh, he he or she can very easily tell you that granitic granites are or uh, uh, they are naturally radioactive because granitic rocks are generally formed which are having high concentrations of uranium so more and more use of granite will definitely have more and more use of uh, radiation accumulation in your houses and uh, nowadays uh, we are having a different types of uh, construction like even our kitchens are having very less uh, ventilations we are having closed kitchens we use the chimney only don't uh, prefer to have a window in the kitchen and we rather don't open those windows so glass 
की पार्टीशन से हम लोग बना लेते हैं बट वेयर द वेंटिलेशन आर पुअर देयर द चांसेस आर मोर दैट यू कुड हैव अ मोर ट्रैपमेंट ऑफ दैट रेडिएशन विच हैव बिन मीटिंग फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट बिल्डिंग मटीरियल so that is why it is important to have good ventilation conditions or so it is important to have a good choice of the materials uh, even a black granite which is naturally radioactive is having more concentration of uh, uranium contamination as compared to the white granites so sometimes you you and architects even the doctors the physicians or the radiologists have to sit together so that you could decide suppose you are giving a, a, a treatment to a person so who has been exposed to ct scans or pet scans or uh, another uh, medical diagnostic things so there that patient will be exposed to the radiations so because those medical diagnostic techniques are using some radioactive material so the natural accumulation throughout a year should not be more than the permissible limits so but in india we don't have a uh, rather a rule or policy also that like, uh, if one has undergone x ray or one has undergone a ct scan or a, or a pet scan and the doctor will give him a or her a certificate that you have been exposed to this much of radiation but in germany in especially in european country it is mandatory for the uh, physician or especially uh, radiologist to certify that this much of exposure has been done to you it is very important because that patient should know that i have been exposed to this much of radiations and now my annual accumulation will be affecting it so that is why uh, doctors don't prefer to go for a ct more than thrice for a pregnant lady during a pregnancy cycle because every time uh, that uh, uterus is exposed to radiation so it can damage uh, or it can have some effects on the uterus itself so that is why they have not been allowed to go for a more than thrice but sometimes for the medical complications they have to perform diagnostics so it could affect so that is why its a, a study is very important no these are the few studies uh, uh, for the references which have been given uh, in newspapers in different studies that lung cancer skin cancer and kidney disease are caused due to the inhalation and similarly in the bathinda and malwa region some of the studies have been conducted which is causing cancers but uh, still it is in the controllable limits now uh, this is a very important study which our institute have conducted Uh, 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 even the cement containing fly ash. Uh, there is a problem uh, in India now. We we are uh, an energy producing state which is uh, totally dependent upon the coal energy, and uh, hydro is a very less. But uh, most of the time we are uh, thermal based. So in the thermal power plants, what is happening that uh, the residue of the Coal that is fly ash that is a big problem for the government. Where to dump it? Now what we have seen that government has made it mandatory. Whatever the cement you are getting from the market that is a PPC cement now. You can't get an OPC ordinary Portland cement. You can't get only CPWD or building and road organizations could get that direct from the cement companies but otherwise for commercial use for uh, your purposes for a construction of your houses you can only get the ppc and it is mandatory by the government that uh, for the ppc there should be a mixing of fly ash up to the level of even 35% so what 65% cement and 35% fly ash no doubt as a civil engineer if i would say uh, it has increased the binding capacity of the cement uh, we have done so many tests with our civil engineering department also the binding capacity increases once we increase the concentration from 15 to say 45% of fly ash within the 100% of cement but on the other hand the radiations also increases because fly ash is naturally radioactive because the coal which you are cutting 
especially in uh, uh, our areas in Punjab where the Lera Gaga, even Roopert, even it was there in the Batinda or the Vandi Sabo Thermal Power Station. The coal which we are getting, they were uh, coming from the Singboom areas most of the time. And uh, that is very close to some uh, mine areas which are having uranium contaminations. So Jadubuda is there in that area. So it is having a natural radioactive inbuilt in it. So once you use that fly ash as a cement, so your walls which are being plastered by with those cements, so they they are emitting those radiation level. And to your surprise, we are already by name EPC with the help of JK, JP, Ultra, JK, Lakshmi, Binani. So all big giants of the cement and uh, uh, my director uh, has to face a uh, court case for this also. But uh, to your surprise, ultimately they have to pay us a compensation of around 3 lakh each by all these five companies and uh, give a research project to us so that we could do work that how that fly ash that is what the what is the actual limit that should be set for the fly ash so that the radiation doesn't similarly ROs which installed especially in your areas uh, in the Malwa regions some of the students belong to uh, rural areas you could see that uh, government has done a very big initiative uh, to install uh, ROs of the capacity of 1200 liters per minute, even with a uh, not per minute, uh, per hour. Sorry, Matlab, mein 1200 liter pani wo filter out kar but to your surprise, what is happening uh, actually that uh, uh, what they are doing, they have installed an RO. I have personally visited those uh, areas where those ROs have been installed along with the deputy commissioner of Mahansa and deputy commissioner of Patinda. And what they are doing actually, uh, you know, RO has a 50% nearly wastage. So, uska jo residue aata hai, wo bahar nikal dete hain log. Aapne garo mein bhi lagaya hoga, dekha hoga. No doubt, RO is removing some of the contamination of some heavy metals and even some percentage of uranium. But uh, that residue, they are allowing that uh, residue of water to flow into the fields which are used for cattle feed. Now what is happening? You have a solid 1 liter of water. I am just an example. If you have 10 grams of heavy metal, then the concentration of it was 10 divided by 100. 10 divided by 1000. So 10 grams, but 1000 milliliter. Now you have 500 ml of water from that water. Which the government claims ki RO se humne nikal diye. Okay, uh, I personally accepted ki kaafi change ho gaya, kuch heavy metal remove ho gaya. Now, wo jo baaki 10 gram, 10 mein se 8 nikal gaya, chalo 2 gram a gaya 500 ml mein, aur jo baaki 500 ml waste kiya, us mein wo 8 gram chala gaya. Thik hai? Ab wo 8 gram heavy metal, 500 ml mein hai, pehle wo 10 gram heavy metal, 1000 ml mein. अब वो ये बताओ कि जो वेस्ट किया मटेरियल उसमें कंसंट्रेशन बढ़ गई मींस प्रीवियसली इट वाज 10 डिवाइडेड बाय 1000 नाउ इट इज 8 डिवाइडेड बाय 5000 व्हिच इज हायर एज कंपेयर टू 10 डिवाइडेड बाय 1000 नाउ दे आर अलोइंग दैट वाटर टू एंटर इनटू द फील्ड्स वेयर द कैटल फील्ड इज बीइंग ग्रोन अब वो कैटल फील्ड जो पट्टे हैं वो खा के गाय दूध दे रही है और वो दूध हम पी रहे हैं और वो दूध के थ्रू हमें कंटैमिनेशन दोबारा वापस आ रहा है सो ऑन द फूड साइकल इफ यू स्टडी सो यू हैव डायरेक्ट इनटेक हैज इट हैज नॉट डायरेक्टली डिक्रीज्ड सो यू यू पीपल आर working in an area where you are reducing something and then from the other source you are increasing that value. So, he is also getting sick, he is getting sick, he is getting sick, he is getting sick, and 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 he is getting sick. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that 
we as a chemical scientist should work on some of the processes where this ro's wastage should be reduced and that wastage should be done in such a fashion that it should be removed from the waste material also waste water also so that is why ngt has taken a very strict action now they have asked all the deputy commissioners to remove all the ro's ro's are now they have not been recommended by the national green tribunal because इससे पानी की वेस्टेज भी ज्यादा हो रही थी भी ज्यादा हो रही है नाउ वी आर वर्किंग ऑन सम ऑफ द पॉलीमर्स वेयर वी आर डेवलपिंग सम ऑफ द इवन नेचुरल पॉलीमर्स दैट इफ यू अलाउ दैट वाटर टू फिल्टर आउट ऑफ आउट ऑफ दैट पॉलीमर इट विल बी अब्सॉर्ब विद इन द पॉलीमर एंड देन दैट पॉलीमर लेयर इज बीइंग रिमूव्ड एंड योर फिल्टर्ड वाटर व्हिच इज हैविंग लेसर कंटामिनेशन that is allowed to be distributed among the public but there is a problem also humne kai filters try kiye dr kayanth aur main ek kaam bhi kar rahe hain hamare department of chemistry mein wo polymer pehle to absorb karta hai lekin 10 minute baad wo polymer filter de absorption shuru kar deta hai to 10 minute tak to jo pani aata hai wo bahut acha aa raha hai lekin 10 minute ke baad wo de absorption ho rahi hai to wo pani fir contaminated ho but still we are working because it is a continuous process continuous research on which we have to work together especially with the chemistry people as well as with the chemical people now there are few agencies uh, who are working in this area that is icrp iaea that is international atomic energy agency iarp indian association of radiation protection their biological effects of ionizing radiation and unscare so those are the agencies even who is there also uh, who are working in uh, all these areas and uh, they are deciding different uh, permissible limits for air water and soil that what should be the contamination limits so what we are interested we are focusing on the red on in air red on in water red on in soil uranium in water uranium in soil radium potassium and thorium in soil so uh, these are the few things which we are working as a radiation physicist and you people can always uh, have an idea or join our lab to do some small projects that you can bring some water samples from your area and uh, you could have an assessment that what is the uranium contamination level and if this much of contamination level is there what will be the effect on uh, our body so you could always study then uh, the important techniques which you could use to measure of course we won't go into the detail in this webinar that what are the all the techniques but you could always note down that for uh, radon and thorium in air you could use ssntd that is solid state nuclear tract detectors where you could use 10 volt of dosimeters then one sensor is dtps that is direct thorium progeny sensor progeny means daughter product another is drps the direct radon progeny sensors and another is red 7 we all are having these detectors in our lab then uranium in soil could be measured with the technique fission track registration technique gamma ray spectroscopy technique similarly uranium in water could be measured with your fission track registration technique laser fluorimetry led fluorimetry icpms that is induced coupled plasma mass spectroscopy uh, dr dukar has worked on these areas uh, uranium contamination in water so radium thorium and potassium in soil you could use gamma ray spectroscopy techniques where you could measure the radium thorium and potassium in soil so these are the few radioactive materials which we are interested which are naturally available in air water and soil that is radon thorium uranium and radium thorium and potassium in soil so we are working in these areas so i would like to share with you uh, this bta series uh, not all the detailed techniques if you see uh, this bta series where alpha decay has been defined with the um, move color nazar aa raha hai sir color nazar aa raha hai yes sir 
तो बीटा इज विद द मोव कलर एल्फा इज विद द ब्लू कलर एंड गामा इज विद द लिटिल बिट रेडिश और ऑरेंज कलर वी वी हैव टू फाइंड एंड देयर इज ऑलवेज अ ट्रेंड एज अ फिजिस्ट देयर इज ऑलवेज अ ट्रेंड दैट इफ एन अल्फा डिके इज देयर इट विल बी टुवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट एंड डाउनवर्ड साइड बिकॉज एटॉमिक वेट एंड मास बिकॉज हीलियम इज बीइंग एमिटेड आउट तो एटॉमिक नंबर विल रिड्यूस टू 2 एंड एटॉमिक Mass will reduce by four. So this this is a nomenclature how to uh, write or mention in the series, which as a physicist you should always follow. And if it is a beta, it will go upward. So ये ऐसे नहीं कि इसको नीचे कर दिया ये ये standard nomenclature है कि इसको नीचे करना है इसको ऊपर करना है जब gamma है तो gamma में कोई ये mass change नहीं हो रहा. So gamma is only emitted out. and uh, these are the two important series because thorium words 97% thorium is present in india and that is why our uh, uh, president uh, ex president dr apj abdul kalam was always uh, giving a stress that we should go for a thorium based reactors because words 97% thorium is available in india instead of uranium based nuclear reactors and uh, but we are not having a surprisingly we are not having a technique to extract that thorium from our natural soil and uh, use it as a uh, source for uh, our nuclear reactors and that enrichment technique is not available with us we are dependent upon the ussr usa and even france for uh, that enrichment contribution and they give us a source to us now if you see this series uh, out of this series uh, once a decay occurs we are having a element called red uh, radon now radon further decays to form two daughter products in which we are interested that is polonium and polonium 214 now these two daughter products are very important in terms of study of radon the reason is by studying the daughter you could always have a uh, because we know that this much of decay has occurred this is the lambda for this radioactive element and we can always uh, calculate the concentration of a parent from the estimation of daughters so uh, we could calculate the contribution of the radon so that is why the study of radon as it is a gaseous state and then its progeny that is polonium 214 and 218 is very important uh, just for choice of measurement that how we should go for the measurement we should go for either long term measurements or we should go for our short term measurements and that depends our choice because Uh, if we are uh, interested in having an exact value then we should always go for a, a long term measurements means we should deploy our detectors for long term for uh, say 90 days or 100 days but if we are interested in only having instantaneous value we should go for a short term measurements so there are some detectors which are uh, uh, doing short term measurements there are some detectors which are doing long term measurements the choice depends upon as that what type of estimation we want to have and uh, of course uh, some advantages and disadvantages i have discussed that uh, if you just want to have a preliminary indicator you should always go for short term measurement it will give you quick results but disadvantages you you cannot have a effect of the seasons you cannot have effect of the ventilation conditions and you cannot calculate the true value because i have already told you by showing that picture of a tree and a person sitting beneath the tree that suppose there are some concentrations are there in your area so how much time i will spend in your area that is my dose uh, so how much time you will be spending in that area that is your dose so if you go for a long term measurements so you will get a clear cut idea that within the variation of season how much effect has taken place that is why preferably you should go for long term measurements 
and uh, the most important detector for the long term measurements which we generally use is the single pin hole cup dosimeter i will show you the detector not going into the detail and these are the detectors which we deploy uh, for the measurement and this is actually uh, you could see that uh, this is a detector in the previous detector ye black black se jo ring hai ye khul jata hai page hai ye basically तो ये इस तरह का डिटेक्टर होता है वेयर वी अलाउ द एयर टू एंटर फ्रॉम दिस पिन होल एंड देन एंटर्स टू अ फर्स्ट कंपार्टमेंट व्हिच वी कॉल एज अ रेडॉन प्लस थोरम कंपार्टमेंट देयर इज अ डिटेक्टर ये डिटेक्टर सेलुलोज नाइट्रेट डिटेक्टर है व्हिच वी कॉल एज अ एलआर115 इट इज हैविंग अ सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 4.7 एमईवी दैट इज ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 4 टू 5 एमईवी नाउ इफ एनी अल्फा व्हिच इज being uh, emitted out from the parent having an energy of the order of uh, 5 mev or 4.5 mev this detector will sense that alpha and that alpha will strike this detector and will create a track apna ek rasta chhod jayega so purpose is very simple on the second this is uh second compartment which we call as a radon compartment because jab radon aur thoron yahan se enter hoti hai thoron ka half hai 55 uh, seconds hai to 55 seconds mein wo khatam ho jati hai aur jaise jaise ye trap karti hai to wo nikal jati hai to sara yahan pe radon aur thoron hota hai yahan pe jo char holes hain they allow only radon to pass through this chamber so this chamber consists of radon itself so now this radon so we Are having a total effect of radon plus thorium. Then we, from this detector, we could have an effect of radon only, and then by subtracting that effect, we could have an effect of thorium. Now, purpose is very simple. Just as I have told you, it's uh, sensitive for energy of the order of 4.7 mV. Now, once that alpha from the polonium, which is of the order of say seven or six mEV, strike this material as it passes, it energy reduces and comes to the detection limit. So it creates a track. So we remove it. 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 पर सेंटीमीटर स्केयर पर डे हमने 90 दिन लगाया हमें पर सेंटीमीटर स्केयर आइडिया पता है कितना है डिटेक्टर का साइज सो वन ट्रैक पर सेंटीमीटर स्केयर पर डे विल गिव यू रेडॉन कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 50 बैक्टेरियल पर मीटर क्यूब सो 50 बैक्टेरियल पर मीटर क्यूब तो हमें नंबर ऑफ ट्रैक्स पता होता है हमें नंबर ऑफ डेज पता होता है हमें साइज ऑफ डिटेक्टर पता होता है सो वी कुड इजीली कैलकुलेट द कंसंट्रेशन This is just an example. It is not exactly 50. Now we have modified the factors. So by just studying, just for your knowledge sake, that how we study, we allow this air to enter it chamber. And वो इसको hang कैसे करते हैं वो मैं आपको दिखा देता हूँ. Sorry, I'm going to go on for a bit. This is how these are being hanged. so uh, we we are hanging these uh, detectors in the houses in such a fashion that uh, it should be away from your uh, ceiling it should be away from your walls also because direct building material ka effect na aaye only jo air that is surrounding this detector that should this is the mesh jahan se ye air enter karegi to niche wala chamber tha अवेलेबल इन अवर लैब we could always use facilities of these instrument and uh, then uh, whatever i think uranium and water little bit i would give you an idea that there are some agencies who have given a different contributions uh, 
that what is the permissible limits of uh, uranium contamination in water for, from WHO and the US EPA United States Environmental Protection Agency that limit is fixed as 30 microgram per liter and from for Indian uh, biological system and uh, environment that limit is fixed as a uh, 60 microgram per liter microgram per liter means ppb parts per billion so you could always have a choice uh, of uh, contamination that uh, if my water is having more than 60 ppb that is microgram per liter it is beyond the permissible limit recommended by the erb there is a need for a treatment and solution of that contamination level so for indian environment it is 60 as far as WHO is there, it is 30. So with this, I give a stoppage to my talk and any questions, if it is there, you are welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, so, uh, I have one question uh, before, uh, before uh, taking the question from the chat box. Yeah. First of all, the, the detectors you have uh, discussed uh, in the lecture about the deployment of detectors in your houses, uh, the dosimetry cup. Sir, uh, would yeah. you tell where, where is the availability of these cups so that we can um, hand? Pin, pin hole cup uh, uh, dosimeters are available with a, a certified agency of the BRC that is a root creator. Uh, it's available in uh, Bombay. I could share the address with you people. It's around uh, 1000 rupee cost is there for this cup. And uh, because uh, cup is not only important thing, you could uh, take those cups from B people also as a pilot study if you want to really deploy those cups. The most important thing is the cellulose nitrate detector. Uh, because uh, that detector is little bit costly. So that detector of the thick, uh, size of a 2.5 to 2.5 centimeter generally costs you around 3000 rupees. Because that film is very costly, uh, one packet costs you around 25,000 rupees. There is a big rule which comes around uh, for a 70,000 rupees. And uh, if for uh, uh, pilot studies you are really interested, we can share our uh, detectors and uh, penal cup dosimeters. You need not to purchase from the market but otherwise you could always purchase if you are having a funding so that cups cost is around 1000 rupees uh, excluding gst and then a detector will cost you around 3000 rupees but uh, for uh, two detectors of this much of size so because you will be buying the films uh, which uh, consist of 25 films and that packet is around costing you 30000 that that you could purchase from the codec pathway uh, who are having their uh, uh, direct uh, in suppliers in India, that is environmental consultant, even Pooltech is supplied from the Bombay. So, Kodak Pathe is manufacturing this type of film, LR115. That is a cellulose nitrate, basically. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, one more question, uh, my mind uh, you have discussed about the uh, permissible limit of uh, this uh, radiations as per uh, World Health Organization or the yeah. Indian agencies, there is very, very, very long range from 1.9 yeah. to 60. 1.9 to 60, because 1.9 is by the ICRP, which is basically for the radiation workers. Now, why there is a very less limit 1.9? Because the radiation workers has already taken care of uh, uh, so many things. They are having uh, uh, radiation safety measurements. So once they are using this, uh, that is why because they have been already exposed to some of the other radiations who are working in radiation area. So for if they will drink a water containing more than 1.9 uh, ppb, so it will add up to their natural dose, which is already uh, coming to them due to their uh, uh, occupational uh, exposure. Because radiation worker are generally working in those areas, especially in mine fields. So where the uranium mines, if you are working, you are directly having an exposure. So for your case, the water contamination should be lesser, so that the nutshell effect on your body for the annual exposure it should be less. 
बट इंडियन एनवायरमेंट जनरली अवर बायोलॉजिकल स्ट्रक्चर और द नोडल स्ट्रक्चर द बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर इज सच दैट वी कुड बी अ मोर डोजेस एंड इट्स अ गुड थिंग दैट ई आर बी हैज सजेस्टेड दैट ऑफ कोर्स 60 इज द परमिसिबल लिमिट फॉर अस एस ही इज द डब्ल्यूएचओ इज रिकमेंडेड वैल्यू ऑफ 30 बट देयर आर सम पॉलिटिकल फैक्टर्स आल्सो देयर आर सम पॉलिटिकल Political factors also, which uh, I couldn't share on this platform, because otherwise we'll create a human crime. So, if suppose in your area, if you develop a study and you publish that study, first of all, the all the serpents will go to the DC. कि ये क्या लिख दिया आप के बंदे ने? तो हमारे लोग तो डर के मारे मर जाएंगे. So sometimes we we don't want to create hue and cry also. So, हम एक दो साल कॉम्प्रोमाइज कर लेते हैं कि चलो उसकी हेल्थ का थोड़ा सा इफेक्ट हो रहा है बट नो डाउट क्वेश्चन इज वेरी जेनुअन इफ डब्ल्यू एच एज रिकमेंडेड थर्टी बाई सजेस्टिंग सिक्सटी बट देर आर सम एरियाज इन इंडिया वेयर द लेवल्स आर लिटिल बिट ऑन हायर साइड सो जस्ट टू अवॉइड दोज यू एंड क्राई एंड वी सजेस्ट दैट दोज पीपल शुड नॉट बी एक्सपोज टू अदर आर्टिकल artificial radiations so we have increased the limit to uh, this value uh, sir one more question yahan par bathinda mein wo jo punjab government ne na ro system lagaye hue hain मैंने देखे सर मैंने डिस्कस किए थे ना आपसे वही वही तो मैंने किए कि वो उसका कोई फायदा नहीं है सर मैं फ्रैंकली हर प्लेटफार्म पे ये कहता हूं दोस आर ओस आर जस्ट वेस्टेज ऑफ मनी एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज मेक फूल्ड ऑफ ऑल द पीपल और बेड़ा गर्क कर दिया इन्होंने और वो आपने आर देखा होगा गांव में जो 50 परसेंट वेस्टेज है वो पट्टों के थ्रू हमें फिर वापस आ रही है उसके ऊपर कोई काम नहीं कर रही है ये जो चीफ इंजीनियर्स हैं अब वो पोलिटिकली बाउंड होते हैं ये काम करने के लिए इवन एनजीटी ने मना कर दिया सर अब तो आर ओ अब सारे रिमूव हो रहे हैं इवन इन जलंधर आपने देखो मैं इतने सालों से रेडिएशन में काम कर रहा हूँ आई एम नॉट इंस्टॉल्ड आर ओ इन माई हाउस जो आपका 150 200 लेवल है हमें बॉडी के लिए चाहिए मिनिमम पीडीएस लेवल वो भी नहीं हमें मिल रहा क्योंकि इसकी सेटिंग जो करने आते हैं वो इंजीनियर्स नहीं है वो एक लोकल दसवीं पास बारहवीं पास बंदे रखे हुए हैं कंपनियों ने और अब क्या हो रहा है आप पहले कॉपर रिमूव कर रहे हो और कॉपर वाला टैंक लगा के कॉपर इंड्यूस कर रहे हो तो इससे तो बेटर ये होता है आप चांदी का गिलास रात को भर के रखो और सुबह वो पानी पियो तो आपको एक अच्छा साठ कट कंटेंट जाएगा तो ये आर ओ कंपनियां बेकूफ बना रही हैं सर इसको कि ये मेरा पर्सनल व्यू है बट इसमें साइंटिफिक स्टडीज मेरे पास इन्वॉल्व है सो वेयर देर इज सिंपली वेस्टेज so that is why we have published this study in the tribune it's the uh, national newspaper and it was published in uh, uh, their national edition so that is why hue and cry was there in the government of punjab also आज की डेट में भी सर हमें जब तक हम न्यूक्लियर के ऊपर शिफ्ट नहीं करेंगे तो हमारी जो ये प्रॉब्लम है ये बढ़ती रहेगी बिकॉज फ्लाई एश एक बहुत मेजर प्रॉब्लम है जो हम लोग अभी फील नहीं कर रहे लेकिन बठिंडा वाले लोगों ने कईयों ने फील करना शुरू कर दिया स्पेशली सम ऑफ द एरियाज दुनियाना रोड पे आप देखे आगे कॉलोनीज बन गई है जहां पर डम्प के ऊपर there are medical problems okay uh, sir uh, there are some questions in the chat box also uh, uh, one question is from ankita one uh, sir when we boil drinking water up to 100 and then let it cool down then can we say that the yes even radioactivity elements may have been decreased आप हैवी मेटल्स को कुछ को सेटल डाउन कर सकते हैं स्पेशली जो सल्फर है और फ्लोराइड है वो सेटल डाउन हो जाता है अगर आप स्पेशली आप बठिंडा और मानसा रीजन की अगर बात करें तो यहाँ पे शोरे की प्रॉब्लम जिसको हम बोलते हैं वो बहुत ज्यादा है तो वो थोड़ी देर बाद वैसे ही सेटल डाउन हो जाता है बॉइल करके आप फिल्टर आउट कर लोगे तो आपका बर्तन वो आपने देखा सफेद सफेद सा हो जाता है चारों तरफ से वो कुछ वैल्यू कम हो जाती है उसमें कोई डाउट नहीं है दैट इज द बेस्ट वे टू ड्रिंक वाटर 
one more question is from Ankita. Uh, tell how can we enter into medical physics after doing PhD in experimental atomic and radiations? Uh, for medical physics, what I would suggest to you that uh, uh, you should enter without PhD because uh, there is a radiation diploma, medical physics radiation diploma, which is uh, conducted by the BRC that is 100% placement oriented uh, and only is conducting that diploma and uh, after PG you could join that diploma BRC and uh, even uh, 7 to 8 students of our uh, last to last year batch were selected in that now they are working as a radiation physicist in some of the uh, reputed uh, hospitals so you need not to go for the PhD, you could join that uh, radiation physics diploma after your PhD, after MSA uh, physics. Uh, one question is from uh, uh, Raman Kumar Bishra. Is bisphenol cause cancer? How? This, uh, Raman Kumar Mishra. This not a level So I don't have an idea because I am not working in this BPA. But uh, uh, the other question which he has asked that how accurate is the air things radon detector? The accuracy rate is of the order of 97 to uh, 98 percent. And uh, these detectors have been calibrated with a lot of experimentation which has been done and uh, just for the purpose of uh, defining equilibrium factor uh, people have spent their PhD for only defining just the equilibrium factor like I was saying one track per centimeter square per day is equal to 50 becquerel per second ye limit nikalne ke liye do char PhD ho gai. so accuracy mein, there is no problem that is 90 to, uh, 97 to 98% accurate Uh, one more question and is the test is last i think there was no test actually we, we just deploy the detectors we don't conduct any tests we deploy detectors and uh, it depends upon the choice of the measurement means we want to detect in air then pinhole cup dosimeter is the best detector which you could deploy for uh, short term measurements red 7 is an instrument which is very good enough you could always use it There is one question, what is the scope of uh, scope after PhD in radiation physics? There is a lot of scope after uh, doing PhD in radiation physics. Uh, most of my students are working in very good areas. Uh, though in India, uh, people are not uh, so much aware about the radiations. They don't uh, uh, have an idea that uh, once we go for a diagnostic, we should ask the doctor that how much uh, dose have been given to me. But uh, in European countries, in USA, uh, the people are very much aware. But still in India, there is a lot of scope. No need to worry about it. So I think uh, these were the only questions sir, in the chat box. Okay, sir. Good sir. Okay, sir. That uh, we are shortly giving you the feedback from uh, so that the certificates of participation will be sent to you. Uh, due to the actually time limit, we can even uh, uh, give them idea that how to conduct this or how to deploy this uh, detector. I want to give them the idea that to deploy and how to calculate because that is a little bit bulky for them as a. If you are not working in this area, calculation part, you could always show them, but that will be a little bit of bulky value for uh, all those participants of this webinar. But just for the information sake, I have told them that these are the detectors, and the uh, one two detectors I have shown them. Uh, otherwise, I have kept my talk very brief. What is the radiation? Why we should make it? Yes. 
थैंक यू डॉक्टर रोहित मैरा फॉर दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉक and uh, i must say that uh, uh, what is our uh, actually aim is to uh, organize such type of event that student uh, uh, should be motivated to uh, take the science as their research uh, career okay. another thing another thing the uh, main objective of the dbt star college is the same and i feel from today's talk uh, that is very interesting because whenever students Uh, they learn about the uh, science exactly in their uh, neighboring environment they are much more uh, uh, feel it that uh, science is actually there otherwise they are having the bookish knowledge or uh, they are studying this and that but now uh, from today's talk i must say that the students uh, they are motivated they will visit to your lab so that they can have the exact idea how the dosimeters they are installed how you i uh, take that cellulose nitrate film and how you uh, calculate the uh, radiation from those in your um, labs so i must say that dr gurpreet will organize this uh, uh, visit to chennai to jalandhar and uh, take it as a, uh, a research project that can be done or you can have different type of uh, soil or um, uh, uh, water samples uh, dr vikas is already has uh, done this and you have guided him and we can do it for the students also thank you thank you sir for sparing your valuable time for our <laughs> students thank you always be a pleasure with you thank you sir now uh, for formal word of thanks i now request dr bubbal to give the word of thanks uh thank you dr sir uh, good afternoon everyone It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a word of thanks on today's occasion. I, on the behalf of D A V College Managing Committee of Delhi and Department of Physics D A V College, Bhatinda, extend a hearty word of thanks to our most valued invited guest, Dr. Rohit Maharaj. Sir, thank you very much for motivating our students. Thank you. Sir.